Treatment challenges, are, there are many still remaining in the myeloproliferative neoplasms and in the presentation I was particularly focusing upon myelofibrosis. We obviously made many advances in this field but we still have some challenges. So we spoke about uh, differences in prognosis and incorporating molecular mutations which we've been focusing on a lot in the last year, 18 months and then um, focused on the benefits of current therapy, but then the particular challenges which remain. And these for me would include anemia, thrombocytopenia, and the management of progression or, and blast phase disease. So with concerning the management of anemia, we have um, the potential, for example, for momolotinib, which completed phase three trials in the last 18 months to manage that better for patients. But unfortunately, that drug missed its um, primary endpoints in its phase three study, so we have to wait and see. At the present time, another drug which is emerging that might be of interest, particularly for anemia, is Luspatacept, an activin receptor antagonist which basically releases the block on terminal phases of erythropoiesis, shown to be effective in low-risk myelodysplasia and hopefully effective in myelofibrosis and currently under trial. Another challenge remains the management of a patient with thrombocytopenia. Around 20% of patients will have a platelet count below 50. These patients might be effectively targeted with um, other agents such as combination therapy, roxalitinib with danazole, something that's been trialled by the MPD Research Consortium. Not very effective, but modestly effective and might be useful in clinical practice. But then um, of note is the activity of percritinib, which is a JAT2, FLT3, and other kinase inhibitor, which may be less myelosuppressive than the other JAK inhibitors. Again, still under clinical trial, but looking very promising for these patients. Finally, another area is the patients who progress with a JAK inhibitor. The first challenge here is actually the accurate definition of this, because there are obviously many facets to the disease, but also to response be it a spleen enlargement, symptom progression, increase in white cells, fall in haemoglobin, increase in blasts, etc. So the first challenge is actually in defining this. We need to make some progress on that in the field in the next year or so. And secondly, what therapies can we use to rescue those patients and perhaps reset a response? And um, there are many potential options for this. Lots of combination therapies are currently being evaluated. Navitaclax plus roxalitinib, azacitidine plus roxalitinib. But one uh, promising therapy that might be a little bit closer to the clinic is another JAK inhibitor, uh, fedratinib, which we've presented results for in the past, but there was a concern about Wernicke's encephalopathy, which has now been overturned by the FDA and a clinical hold has been lifted. So we can look forward to more data with this drug, which seemed to be very effective in the Jakarta 2 study, which was published just last year.